Hi friends, in this video I want to talk about an interesting microcircuit and a module for a battery charge that I made based on it. I don't know about you, but in my practice of assembling homemade products, there is often a desire to have battery power supply. But after watching various photos on the internet how lithium-ion batteries explode, I didn't want to install simple charge-discharge controllers. I prefer the module to be able to control the temperature of the batteries, have all sorts of protections, a slow charge when deep discharged, and ideally to immediately give out 5 volt to power consumers such as Arduino. That is, the user simply takes some kind of module, connects any lithium-ion battery that is at hand, and it's OK. And the most interesting, I managed to find such a microcircuit. This is BQ25606. I developed a test version of the module based on it. It turned out such a printed circuit board. Of course, they are factory made. You will find all files for ordering such boards at the factory in the description. In my case, the boards were ordered from our sponsor, GLCPCB, which is able to manufacture high quality boards for every taste, including complex multi layer boards. All you need to do is just upload the original Gerber files to your project, pay for the order, and wait for the delivery. Find quality at reasonable prices guaranteed. You will find a link to the GLCPCB website in the description. Let's look at the schematic diagram of the device. The BQ25606 chip has an OTG input, a high logic level at which puts the chip into 5 volt generation mode. That is, in order to get 5 volt, you don't need to add a separate microchip with a DC DC boost converter. In this case, the maximum output current on the 5 volt line is 1.2 amps. With a higher load, the microcircuit will go into protection and turn off 5 volt. It will also go into protection when the battery overheats, which is controlled by changing the resistance of the NTC thermistor. This input circuit on a diode and a transistor is necessary so that when an external power supply is connected to the microcircuit, the 5 volt generation mode is forcibly turned off. That is, the voltage from the connector goes to the transistor and opens it, and the OTG line goes to the ground. Here, I made a little mistake with the board. I didn't take into account that if there is no voltage at the base of the transistor, it will hang in the air and the voltage included on the base will open the transistor. So the 5 volt generation mode will not turn on. Therefore, in the final circuit, a 10 kilo ohm resistor is added here. And on the test board, this was solved simply by soldering an SMD resistor between the base and the emitter. The downside of this circuit is the voltage drop across the diode when charging. I would welcome your suggestions and ideas on how this node could be changed to eliminate the diode. The output LC filter can be omitted. Here, the inductance serves to limit the charging current of the capacitances that may be on board of the connected module. If the capacitance is too large, then the current trigger protection will work before the capacitors have time to charge. These resistors serve to limit the input current consumed by the microcircuit and the output current of the battery charging. Approximate empirical formulas for calculating these resistors are written directly on the diagram. Let's test the module. For tests, I took three lithium-ion batteries connected in parallel. I soldered the resistor to limit the charge current to 3 amperes. Let's see how the module works in all modes. First mode generating 5 volts. We turn it on and see that a voltage of 5 volts appears at the output. The pulsation level is quite noticeable. We connect a 1000 microfarad capacitor in parallel with the output terminals and we get already acceptable ripples. In the module itself, I didn't put a capacitor of such a large capacity. I assume that the module will be connected to electronic circuits which will already have a power supply capacitor, that is too much capacitance isn't needed here because the current trigger protection will not work. We increase the current and see that this protection has worked. This is indicated by a flashing LED. We click the toggle switch and see how 5 volt at the output reappeared. When discharged with a current of 1 ampere, the microcircuit and the inductance are barely warm. This heating can generally be neglected. Let's check the overheating protection. During charging, we heat the NTC thermistor with a soldering dryer 
and see how the charging current has dropped to zero. The microcircuit has gone into protection. Now let's check the same with the 5V generating mode. We turn on and warm up the NTC thermistor. We see that protection has worked again. Now let's discharge the batteries and check the overcharge protection. The multimeter on the right shows the battery voltage and the ammeter on the left shows the charge current of 1 ampere. When the voltage drops to 3.2 volt, the 5 volt generation mode turns off and the LED blinks, indicating an error. However, according to the datasheet, the protection operation voltage in this case should be about 2.8 volt. Apparently, there is a strong drawdown on the wires from the battery to the microcircuit. Since I want to test this chip completely, I connect to the SYS pin and continue to drain the battery until it turns off completely. The discharge current is about 5 amperes. At a level of 2.4 volt, the microcircuit began to turn off the load due to a voltage drop and the ammeter began to twitch. Now let's check the charge. We apply voltage to the input of the microcircuit. By the way, I note that the BQ25606 microcircuit allows voltages up to 13.5 volts. It will lower the voltage itself to achieve the required charging current. We can see that the charging current is very small. This is done to increase the resource and reduce the heating of a heavily discharged battery. The microcircuit charges it with a small current of about 120 mA to a level of about 3.1 V. Then, fast charging will turn on. Value of that current is set by the resistor and also depends on a limitation associated with the recognition of a specific power supply. Yes, the D plus and D minus lines enter the microcircuit, and it can set the power supply current consumption based on the signals on these lines. But this chip unfortunately doesn't know the power delivery technology. We see how the chip switched to fast charging mode. We are waiting for a full charge and see at what value it stops. The battery was charged and turned off safely. By the way, if you are wondering how microcircuits increase voltage in general, let's look at the block diagram. Here you can see four MOSFETs. The battery is connected to the BAT terminal. Here is the Q4 transistor and some kind of charge current control system. Further, the battery voltage from the output SYS goes through the inductance, then two MOSFETs and then another one MOSFET. If you look closely, it is clear that the Q1 and Q2 MOSFETs are a classic pair of protection during charging and over-discharging. When charging, these transistors regulate the amount of energy pumped into the battery, thereby stabilizing the charge current. And when the microcircuit is switched to OTG mode, then transistor Q3 is turned on. When the transistor Q3 is open, the current through the inductance will go to the ground. Further, when it is closed, the self-induction current is released. That is, this is a classic DC-DC boost converter circuit. Then this voltage passes through another pair of MOSFETs and goes to the VBUS line. I mean, there is no magic here, it is just that there are enough transistors in the microcircuit and the inductance is connected in such a way as to be both a step-up and step-down converter. So we got such an interesting module, and if you need to get a more powerful 5 volt output, then you can add an additional DC-DC converter, for example on the TPS61022 chip. I tested this combination and got 5 volt and a stable current of 3 amperes. You can do more, but the chip starts to get very hot. Of course, due to the silicon crisis and the deficit of microchips, you can't assemble such a module cheaply now, as it was a year ago. But I hope things change and that you are interested. Please share your experience in the comments about interesting microcircuits for batteries. That's all today. Please don't forget to rate the video and subscribe to the channel. Now I say goodbye until we meet again. With you as always was Kassian TV.